thank you for the introduction. And once again, let's give it up for my for getting all this stuff together. Yeah. Amazing. It is such a pleasure and honor to be here opening the first day with the first talk. Mm -hmm. Fabulous conference. Uh, I'm going to take you on a deep dive and journey into the wondrous world of teaming Flutter apps. Uh, there is a lot of things going on in teaming that may seem strange. And I'm Mike, by the way. Uh, Mike Rudson. Uh, I'm sort of a Flutter enthusiast. I've been do, doing teaming, teaming and fluttering and enjoying Flutter since 2019. My uh, Twitter handle is up there. Just go give it a follow if you like, and we can flutter together. Uh, I work at a company called Eneron. We help property owners make their buildings energy efficient and save money. And uh, with the ongoing energy crisis, price increases, property portfolio owners suddenly got a lot more interested in energy efficiency. I can tell you that, which is a nice thing. But let's start getting into teaming. So why should you team your app? The boring answer. Uh, for design consistency to your app. It's like CSS for your widgets. Well, the team will make it, your UI widgets follow the same design. If you change your design, every UI in your UI widget in, the app, in your app changes. It follows your design. And the cool part is you can do it all dynamically in code. So you can use that to make white label apps and let your users configure the team on the fly. And we're going to see some examples of that. Yeah. What I really like with the teaming is that it's totally dynamic and the change is animated from previous team to the next one. And uh, this is the team's playground app. You might have seen it as a team from the Flex Color Scheme. It's probably one of the most dynamically teamable apps that, that is around. And uh, the difference it can change its looks from one way to another is, is quite fascinating and it's a bit addictive to play with it. I have to, I have to admit that I spent way too much playing with that, this app than, than actually making it. And I really like to point out here that no widgets have their properties touched or offended here at all. They all got styled to become absolutely fabulous. So there is no properties being, being, being adjusted at all. And uh, other things that you can do with this is that anything you design in, in, the, in the setup, in the playground, you can copy and paste into your own app so you get the same team. So maybe at the end we are going to run tight, so maybe at the end we'll, we'll see more about that. So let's get the topics for the day out of the agenda. So teaming data, that's a complex topic. Uh, how do you do it right so that you get all these nice things working correctly? Uh, and, and what is the state of Material 3? I'm not going to say a lot about that. And, and then the actual deep dive is going to go when we go into the color scheme, because that is so important when you want to do your Material 3 designs correctly. We're going to see how to do that. And uh, we're also going to go how to harmonize colors and do that with team extensions. I'm going to say a few words about component teams, and maybe if we have time we will you revisit the team playground, we'll see. <clears throat> So there are quite many ways to contract and define colors for your team data. They all produce different results, and uh, it's really important that you use the right starting point to get, uh, get the, sort of the whole thing going the right way, because if you go down the wrong track, you're going to maybe end up with teams that don't look so nice. And uh, there's a lot of combos you can do with team data that will, uh, will sort of result in different results, and there's around 10 of them that all produce spectacularly different results that may be surprising. Uh, there is uh, this group. You have your team data light, your team data dark, and, uh, and that's actually doing it from the swatch that we have. You, you remember the old colors, colors blue, red, the swatch thing that you do. You can do that with a primary swatch. And you can create a color scheme from a swatch that produces some funky results. And the new one is a good constructor is the team data from a color scheme, but if you do that from a swatch, you get something quite funky. And this group is then the new one, where you are basing it from a fully def defined and, and designed color scheme. This is legacy. This is the current ones, and there are some really new ones in the current ones too. And they 
all have their own sort of differences and issues, this stuff you shouldn't touch. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to go there, and I'm going to show you why. So you might say, oh, but I do the team data light and dark, and, and, and that seems to work for me. But yeah, okay. And, and, this, and this, these things, there is only really two that you can, you can trust to get a good starting point, and that's the team data from. You can, of course, start with any of them, but you end up having to adjust a lot of things that you may not want to adjust. So, and then if you go full up, you can do the team data, data construction. And I'm going to show you briefly what are the differences, because it's quite spectacular how, how things change when you do it differently. So I say that only the team data from works, and we're going to take a look at that. And uh, for that, we need some colors. We need the primary color, and uh, that's going to be sort of a, a base star color. And since we're going to show what the swatches don't work, this is a green, we are going green, of course. So we make a custom color material color swatch that we're going to use for that. And we're going to see what happens when we do a full material three color scheme. There's a lot of colors going in, into that to get it, to get it nice. And I'm going to show you how to get these colors and to get them right for, for a material three color scheme. And when you do team beta light and dark, this one has its own set of issues. I mean, it's, it's a default set of colors, so we can't really blame it for being ugly. It's just what it is from a long time ago. But its biggest challenge is if you start with this and do some copy bits on it, you're going to end up having to modify a lot of things. And the biggest challenge are in the dark team, because it's a gray team, it's not a dark team. It doesn't take the right, right dark colors from anywhere. So if I do this the same way that we are going to say that, OK, let's take a team data from a primary swatch and use this green one, we can see that we get pretty result on all team data colors. Color scheme is horrific, and it's still gray. It's not a dark scheme. So if you start from this, you're going to have to modify a lot of colors to get them beautiful. If I, if I do version 3 here, I create a color scheme from a swatch, from this swatch we have there, and do that, you can see I got some colors in, 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 the, in the color scheme, but team data is it's nothing. There's no colors, the colors there in it. And if you want to try this, by the way, uh, there is a bit.ly link if you are online there watching, you can go to this link and you can play with this app and switch between all these teams and switch between material 2 and 3 and see them. It's just a dark app, very simple app, showing it. And when we go forward, I click over here. This is the funkiest one of the all. This is the one that I call uh, totally ugly. This is what happens if you make a team data from a color scheme and you create that color scheme for your swatch. Uh, because it, that, the from swatch puts some of the green color in the, in the background and you get really washed out there on this. This is, this is really, I think nobody's tried this one. But it, it, it's a funny one. You, you should definitely not do that. Uh, and then you have one that color scheme. That's a thing. You should start from that nowadays, right? So, okay, let's do that. We have our custom scheme that we define, and then we start, I say, team data color scheme. Use that scheme. All right, the scheme is fine. But all the old team data colors, they are not. Because it's not doing anything. It's not assigning any colors to those values. So that means, uh, yeah, it's on the way out. I'm going to mention that a little bit too. But it's uh, still going to affect a lot of widgets that depend on these, till, till these team data colors, regardless of you using material two or three. So it's, it's not so good. So then we go to one of those and say, OK, this is a good starting point. You can do that. Take your fully defined color scheme, plop it in team data. And now we got a reasonable set. We end up with some colors here. Primary, uh, primary color dark and light, they are blue. That still comes from the default. <laughs> and uh, you got your ugly toggle with the, with the default teal color there as well. And that's going to affect some widgets. Mostly the toggle will still. That's on the deprecat deprecation list. It's already deprecated in master, so it's going to get better. But we still have some challenges there. So then we can go forward and look at this team data color scheme seed. This is a very new constructor. It basically does the same thing as the previous one. It just creates the color scheme from a seed color. I had set up these colors so that the, the green, the, the seed that you do from the primary seed that I had, it creates the same colors like, like I had for the fixed one. So we can see that the differences. Otherwise, it does the same thing as team data from, but it does one more funky thing. It assigns outline color from the color scheme to, to the divider team, to the divider color. And that's the wrong color for it. So, so you get, that's why you got these very prominent dividers, and I had used divider colors around these boxes to, to be able to show it. 
Still, it does the dark surfaces, right? It's, you see the colors from the background and surface to do all those, so that works. But so it's only one color you would have to adjust if, if you use this one. But maybe uh, you can do again the color scheme from the sea. This one is, is not good, but you can see it instead of doing that one that had the issue with the divider we saw, you just do a color scheme from seed and create that color scheme. And you get a decent result. This does still have issues though. I don't know if I have time to go, go into them, but because it's um, creating the, 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 the colors from in the, in the dark side, it's going to use when the primary color and is going to be a light one that means dark text. So your primary text theme is going to be the wrong color and this if, if, if you look at it. It's going to be white text on a very light green. And that's because it's using the primary color in theme data color to determine that color and not from the color scheme. So that, that's a challenge with it. And, and the way you can fix this is, is, is rather involved and complicated. And, and you're going to see that in, in, the, in, the, in the model, in the dark pad that I'm doing. But you can fix this by basically copying what the team data from is doing and fixing a few things. Uh, the first thing is we're going to take care of the team data colors, the primary dark and those. We can, we can plug some colors in. If we have a custom color scheme, we could be using, we could be using those from the color scheme instead. But, but there I'm just computing some values for it, so we get some nice colors on them. The other thing you need to take care of is toggleable color. And that one needs to be dependent on if it's, if it's material 2 or dark. Because if it's material 2, you want it to be secondary, and if it's if it's material three, you want it to be primary, so we get a nice color on, on, on them when we are when we are using material material three. And that's just because uh, the secondary color in material three is a very muted earthy color. It's not going to pop a whole lot, so it's going to have another color strategy when when uh, material three support for them is, is is released, but it's not yet. So we need to fix that well if they're going to use material three. Other things we we need to take care of here is. Uh, an issue that the team data from has when you are using material three because it's getting the wrong surface color so so the indicator color is actually not going to be visible in, in material three on the tab bar neither is the tab bar itself and the only way we can fix that is to actually introduce introduce a tab bar team in it if you use material three colors in it so those are a little bit some of the tricks that uh, are involved in, in, in getting a team data set up. And I, I learned all this while building Flex Color Scheme, of course, that does a lot of trickery with the colors and make sure that you always have all the colors in the right spots and places. And uh, this takes a little bit of time to figure out. For example, in the dark scheme, you should always do a, do a surface. And, and so, but this is a starting point for, for doing that. I don't know if we can, let me see if I can do a quick demo on it. I don't know if we have time for that. Well, let's use this one. To, I'm going to have to look at the monitor here because I can't see what's going on there. We have little technical issues setting everything up. So let's do this as a, as a material tree and let's take one of these that is supposed to be good and beautiful. And if we start looking at the, uh, at the, at the buttons, etc., hey, you can by this way see material tree as well in action. If I toggle a little bit here, you can see the old style of the chips. I'm going to do a little bit review of this material tree here at the same time now, and, and the new chips. And the cool thing about chips is you get all, it gets themed everywhere except on chip. <laughs> so you have all the other, other chips, the material tree doesn't affect it. I made a suggestion that we should fix this and, and it's going forward, but it didn't land. <laughs> so that, that, that will come later. You will, you will see that. Another new thing is in this is the new icon buttons. It can have a toggle nowadays as well. Plus, it has a lot of new styles that are in the Material Tree Guide, but unfortunately, there is no built-in constructors for those, so you're going to have to style them yourself that way. And I think that's a little bit sad. It would be nice to have constructors for it. Uh, you remember the nice buttons, etc. There is no tonal button here that is available in the Material Tree Guide, but that, that is coming too. That one is actually in Master already, so that, that we will have. I, I think it would be nice if uh, everything you see in the Material Tree design are available as widgets with their own constructors and you don't have to create them through styling it. But it's a little bit extra code, of course, in the framework, so it's a, it's a mixed bag, if I, what you want to do. Uh, <clears throat> here we're going to see, now we are using this uh, this team 9 with the, from, from the color scheme, and here we see the first issue of it. Circle avatar is not is this blue, because that one is actually using one of the old team beta colors. And when we go further down the list, we have 
actually the new upbars, etc. And, and, and this is this is all nice, but uh, it comes with some new issues as well. But hey, you can see there's supposed to be a tab bar here, but there is no tab bar because it's using that uh, primary color in, in in the team data from this to to, to get get us this tab bar, which was which is then going to be be this color color here. And it's going to have the wrong surface color for it. But yeah, okay, it works. Good enough. Okay, let me see how I can get back. So that's, that's why I created a little bit of these things that will take care of it as, as a really short version of, of it, what it, what it does then when you add a little, little bit of team data to pick, take care of it. So your aim, you know, that one gets team when you use this one instead and the you get it sets all the color. That's all I want to say and go into this. But it is a little bit tricky and it's and it's uh, fortunately going to get a lot better. Do I have? Yeah, let me get that one out of the way. Probably not going to need it anymore. So there is a lot of deprecations going on in team data, in, in team data, and they are all coming eventually. It's been going on for a few years, but what? But it will lead to when that is done is that you no longer have to know about this. So when you actually give your team data a color scheme, it's going to get used everywhere on all the widgets. You're not going to have to know all these things about the legacy issues that you have there to get the colors into their expected places and widgets. But at the moment, it's a little bit messy. So unless you notice, you can run into a lot of frustration. And, and that was one of the background stories why I started Flex Color Scheme, because I got a little bit, a little bit frustrated with fixing it all the time. Uh, okay, next one is uh, what was new in Material 3, and I actually already showed this, so I don't need to talk so much about them, and it was in the, it, it's in the release notes. And I really like this new app bar, the medium, it's a sliver app bar, you're going to have to use slivers when you want that, if you don't get it, just with a standard app bar. And you can see all the new chips except chip, which is kind of funny. I, <laughs> I told the guys that this is okay, but all right. And you got the new icon buttons, and uh, when you actually see the, the guide, it says you have all these. Yeah, if you create them in style from, you get them, but you don't have any constructors to get them automatically. So you can do them, but you have to create them manually. Okay, we already saw the dark path, so now I can move on. And now I'm pretty good on time for going into the, some of the more complex topics. This was actually pretty simple. This is just team data and what you need to do and, 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 and use to get the colors into the right spots. Now we're going to go into a, a one, my new favorite topic on how to make color scheme beautiful using material three color schemes and how to make it quite deep into the algorithms and what's going on. Because what we have is, you know, it used to be simple, material T two color scheme, there's, there's a lot of colors there already, but not so many. But then you look at the material three and oh my goodness. <laughs> well, how do I specify all these colors, get them right? And it's uh, going to be a little bit challenging because they have also rules for their in the sort of relationship between them or what should be lighter and darker than what, etc., for it to become beautiful. And then you have the complexity of, of uh, doing the same for a dark, dark team. And when you do that all, if you do that all manually, it's, it's pretty impossible. You have, with the light and dark team, you have 56 color values that you need to define. That's not something you want to do. And there is uh, two more for color schemes of you joining, coming in, in, in master, so there's going to be 60 if you do more light and dark, 60 colors. Now, that's a nice strong number, don't say it. it's easy to remember, I have to define 60 colors. So what do I do about that? How do I go about it? So let's say you go the material two way. There you have the idea that you start from, the, from some defaults, color scheme, light and dark, and you override a few colors. And that, that looks fine still for material two. This will be the fully defined one that we had, but if I only define those colors, you end up with something looking like that, with those 12 colors. That's reasonable to do by hand. And those colors still work if you're doing material two. That's still, still doable and fine. But if you're not going in material three and you want the color system colors to be correct for that, you're gonna to have to do something else. One thing you can do, and this is an excellent tool from material, material team, uh, it's Material Team Builder. It's available as an app that you can use. You can go in there, pop out your, pop, pop, put your color in there, then you go to export. Oh, my clicker is not working. And 
then you export it for Flutter and you get the color scheme definitions with all the colors. And that's, that's nice, but uh, that doesn't work for us if we want to do it this dynamically and do, do it so online. So then you go ahead and say, okay, we already saw this, this uh, constructor for color scheme called the color scheme from C. Then you start with a nice brand color, we're going to do a pink one, and say, okay, primary color is, is, is this volume, and that's going to create Nice colors, and wow, this is actually pretty pretty. Now you can be pretty in pink. I think, I think that, that works well, but if you take a closer look, that's not my brand color, I had this, and then I get it ended up, and that's how the algorithm works that sees it. And what you can do to correct it is, is, is just go in and put a primary color in, in, in there, and say that, okay, use that value, and then, then you get that, and still matches pretty well, because it's the same hue, and that's what's making it work. So but what is really going on here, and I think it's, worth taking a look at that, because it's quite uh, fascinating and exciting, and I really, I really love what, what Google has done with this new color system. So one key color becomes 13 tones with a shade, okay, how, where do these colors come from? What, what, what kind of magic is this? Is there a color wizard in the box? Yeah, there, there kind of is, and it's called material color utilities. And uh, this is something, uh, something that Flutter now depends on, it has a new since release 3, it has a new package dependency. And uh, this is uh, introducing a new color space developed by Google. And it was really exciting to read some of the articles about how it came to life and how do we create smooth colors and, and do all this. This library create contains a lot of tools, but Flutter uses only the scheme API to create a color scheme from a single seed color. And so how does that work? This, this, this magic, let's, let's examine that a little bit. It can be really interesting to know, because when I see it with this brand color, I got this color scheme. What's going on in the background there is that it's creating a, a tonal palette where you have all these tones, and uh, use, using this, uh, this new color space, and what it's starting doing is picking that, okay, let's get 40, that one goes to primary, and 100 is white. It always starts with black or zero and goes to 100, which is always white. And, and then it's going to say that, okay, pick that one, and for, for, for the, uh, sorry, yeah, the tone 90 goes, goes to primary container and tone 10 there. And this is then repeated for the secondary, etc. And we'll have some other colors being picked from the neutral palette to the backgrounds. And the same thing happens, same thing happens to a few other colors. Then comes the really neat part. The dark scheme will be created from the same seed color and the same palette. The only difference is it's picking different colors, the different tones from this. So you get 80 to the primary and, and 20 to the own primary and, and 30 to primary container and, and 90. And this is then repeated. And uh, if we look a little bit more about what's happening here, it's, it's quite interesting because it's uh, when you generate the seed color, it's uh, gonna take the hue from that, that color and it's going to have to be at least 48. In this case, it had 55. Uh, it, had, it, uh, it had chroma 48, so that's the limit. It's always 55. It's going to use that. And, and hue is going to be 6. This hue of 6 is going to get used for almost all the colors, except for the tertiary palette and the error palette. Error palette is just fixed values that it's using. And, and that is going to be used. But its difference is how much chroma is it using. It's going to use whatever value it has from the primary color, but at least 48, so it's always going to get pretty colorful. Uh, but secondary palette, it's using the hue from the, from the seed color, but chroma is fixed to 16, which means you get a very earthy tone, the sort of pastel kind of tone of, of, of this, of this, prime, of this hue, hue that you had. And uh, what is varying here then when it's making the tone, it's keeping the hue and chroma, those values, and then you see the tone slider basically at the bottom, and that is going to pick with this very zero all the way to the 100. So then how it makes the tertiary palette, it's, it's still the same hue as a starting point, but it adds 60 degrees to it, so it's going to move it. You can see that it's a little bit orange, and that's, that hue slider goes from zero to 360, it's the traditional hue, the hue circle. And uh, what you get then is you're going to get something around in, in the orange area then. And, and that's how, how this is made up when you're seeding the colors and it's getting... These are hard-coded values in it, and that's something I wanted to address a little bit. Because some limits with this is that you can only have one seed color with the color scheme from seed. 
uh, the material web builder, you can do different seeds for the for the secondary and tertiary pellets, but you can do them in flutter. And uh, the other thing is um, the mapping that we saw, what tone goes where, that is fixed. That's, you know, the material that we started, that's okay, it should be that way. But, uh, and the chroma where is our So, but does this matter? Yeah, it kind of does. It uh, creates beautiful, very contrasting color schemes. But uh, we're gonna run out of variation. Because uh, you get, you know, in this end, you get something, you get your red, here you get your orange, earthy, orange tones. You can adjust a little bit and you get some tones here, you get these uh, earthy greens, uh, olive greens, whatever you want to call it, and, and some teal light things going on here. And uh, there, we get, there we're getting into the blue with a little bit of earthy purple. And if you go here, you get the purple with, with an earthy red brownish thing. It's going to be that from past 60 over there. So, it, you know, you can vary it a little bit. I ex left out red there because that's the error space. If you go there, you get the same as the error color and it clashes with it. So, so there, there is a little bit sort of, yeah, you can vary it slightly, but they are going to look like some mutation, some permutations of this set. And, and that can, you know, be, well, it, this works fine when you are grabbing the color from an image and uh, that image color is used as a seed, because whatever color you throw at this seed color, it comes up with beautiful palettes due to how the algorithm works. But they, they get a little bit limited in variation. So as a part of Flex Color Scheme, I wanted to see, can I modify this thing? And yeah, we can. Sure, let's tweak material color utilities. I want to go in on this layer. All right, cool. I create my, it, it's using something called a core palette there in this layer. Um, let's make my own flex core palette. I want to be able to give it a secondary tertiary. I want to change the chroma limits. And I want to do something else too. I want to be able to configure and vary what tones it picks where. So yeah, let's do that. Let's create a configuration class where I can configure how it does. Let's make a default one called flex tone material. That's going to give you the M3 setup. Okay, fine. I have some other pre-configured values, but you can roll your own. There you go. Let's roll my own. And now I get different results from this seed color scheme from seeds. I'm using three seed colors. I'm using different mapping. I'm using different chroma limits. But I'm still using this wondrous color space that Google made up, this HTT color space. It's really kind of cool what you can do. And I did this in flex color scheme, and I thought, a few days before flood writings, can we do something fun with this? Fun with this, and how does it work? And then show you, show you it. So what happens here? Here is you know, seeding this with one color. It's going to look pretty same. Same. You, you see the palette that comes in there. Seeding it with two secondary color, and that's not very very because it's very earthy to begin with. You can't do much with it. And we have some brown there. That's going to get a little bit when we see that with the brown one. And then we can change. This was the material tree setup. We can do a soft, I think that's what was the soft. It gets even more dirty and pastel-like. And uh, I can create a jolly one that has more colors in it, a little bit more colorful, and uh, uh, ultra contrast. I like this one because you can create an accessibility version of your same colors with the ultra contrast one. That, that, so that, that is some pretty interesting things that you, you can do with this. And what, uh, what I wanted to do with this also, I thought before about this, let's give this as a color utility. You can use as an option where you have a little bit more configurability in it. So I released a couple of days ago a bed out of it, and, and yesterday, last night, the, the 1.1, 1.0 version that uses FUT 3.3, uh, the scoring is going to be 140 once the panel stuff loads, etc. The pub is not updated to 3.3 fully yet with all the scoring. But yeah, so this is available as a color utility for a color scheme that you can use if you want more flexibility in how you see things. Okay, I'm at time. Okay, looking good on the time. Okay, oh, let me catch my breath. <laughs> so, if you go into the material design guide, you will find something quite interesting there with custom, custom colors or extended colors that it talks about. It says user color, that's your color scheme coming from the, from the background team or whatever, it's dynamic changing. But you might have some custom colors in, in, in your app. And with custom colors, they are typically semantic colors. They have meaning like canceled, done, booked, whatever, things like that. And you're supposed to harmonize them against your color scheme so that they match a little bit better. They're still using the same colors, but you can see they are changing a little bit in tones to match the surrounding colors. And this is something that is mentioned in material design. 
There's no talk about how do I do this in Flutter? I want to do this. Okay, let's see how we do that. Because that is really going into the, into the team slow. So, so I, I, in, in, in the Flex Color Scheme Teams Playground demo app, uh, it generates the code that you can use to just copy paste the team that you have configured with it. So I wanted to use that because there I have a code highlighting color scheme, which is outside, uh, outside of the color scheme. And I want to drive, drive that to, to tune them because you can select a lot of colors there, how to, how to do it. So, so let's see how we can fix that so it's not always the same, but when I change colors in the, in the, in the team, it's gonna adjust the, the, that a little bit to drive, better match the color scheme. So um, how can we do this? Well, good starting point is team extension. I'm not going to talk about team extension because Craig did a wonderful video about it. It's, it's really, if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. Absolutely. So, and it's very useful for making properties for custom widgets. It's like a, like a team that is integrated in team data for your custom components. And you can put a lot of teams in it. And these semantic app colors is a great, great example of what you can do with that. So without going too much into this, I have my colors for, for the code team. I just call it code team. It's just some colors. It's, it's going to extend team extension and it's with, with the code team. You have to have your copy weight override and your lerp override. The lerp is there so that uh, team data knows how to linearly interpolate the things that you put in, the colors or whatever property values you have. So then, then, then I have the colors for it that we had in you know, my code highlighting them. I'm going to use that. But here comes the crux for it. Let's put a function in there that uses uh, material color utility, utilities uh, function called blend harmonize, where I, where I can give these colors as an input. And, and how I use this then is basically I had the extension code team harmonized for the light one and brightness light. Okay, that's how I use how I use I plug that into the team data for that. Uh, the light color scheme is going to be whatever scheme we are, we are looking at. All right, and then in, in, in the app, I'm actually need to use this somewhere. There is a syntax highlighter scheme. Uh, let's get that, you know, from the team extension with the call scheme. Now, this is going to lead to some, some interesting results. You can see the colors now, the values are not visible at this resolution, but maybe you will be able to see that they are changing a little bit in tone. As I change the colors, the values are adjusted for this, and the colors are adjusting here also in, 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 the, in the color scheme that's going on there. So that's how we would do that to, to get this use a team extension and, and dynamically adjust them against the colors that your team is using. That's kind of a cool little experiment to see how you do how you would go about doing that. All right, we're switching. I see my schedule is there. Okay. So let's say a few words about uh, component teams. There are a lot of them, but you're gonna have to learn how to love them and embrace them. Because if you don't, you're gonna, you know, start putting property values on on the on the widgets that you should really be teaming, so you don't have to touch them in your app. So there is uh, uh, there's 34 of them, and there's some related things for it, and and uh, most of them are quite simple, and you know they have this, uh, they are no no by default, and all the, the behavior is defined in the widget, and that used to be very difficult to find the defaults for it, but it's improved a lot. I really like what they've been doing it because they've been. They're now doing the sort of, we are extending the base dialog team and getting the defaults for M2 and M3 is generated by some magic. But my Google video comes, the property values come from a database and they have some code generation for it to get the, all the values. The good part is it's easy to find the defaults. It used to be all over the place in the code base for it, for the widgets. Now it's getting, this only applies to the widgets that have been migrated to, to Material 3 though. But this is a nice improvement. I really enjoy that. <coughs> So most of the component teams are, are, are simple, but there is complexity in, in it. And again, Craig talked about the material state properties and, uh, and how, how you use that. Watch that video if you have, I never have, have understood them. But an example about that is, uh, uh, I, there was a tweet about it. Oh, I can't, you know, ch change, you know, the, the background color for my text field to be to whatever it, I want it to be. I want to have one when I hover, one when I focus, and one with the background field, and maybe one for error or two. And I can't do this. And you know, can you somebody says there is this hover focus color in it. But but if you try, you will find that you get the you get the hover color, but the focus color never shows up. And also if I if I do an error in it and I want it to have the error show up there as well, 
uh, I didn't get an error background, I wanted some red on the background too. That doesn't work. Yeah, you, you, yeah but, but there is a way. This fill, this fill color, it's just a color. But you can use material state color resolve with on it. And now if I do that, it's not just a color, but you can use this as a fill in for it. And now if I do it, like it's it's a little bit of a code, but you can still do it and fix it. And and you can do this for any widget nowadays, pretty much that supports material state and have these different states, even if it's just a color. You can use material state color and resolve it and get the, the, these different state features on, on them that, that doesn't support it. So then that's that's kind of a cool thing. Some widgets have behavior that you can't replicate with a team. They have default behavior when you switch and do some things to them, to them that you cannot do the same thing with a team with a little bit different values. For example, snack bar. If you want to set the rounding for that, and their snack bar has two modes, it has a fixed and a floating, and say I want to change the water radius on the, on the, on the floating one from its, point four to four, from its four to maybe 10, yeah, you can do that, but then the fix changes too. You can't, you can't change it with a team or team, team for it. And the same thing with the new floating action button, the border radius on it. All the different constructors have, have, a, have different sort of defaults, but if you want to create, change those defaults, you can only change them all to one value. So, but these things, you know, you can make a suggestion, and then, so I'll, I'll keep doing that, and, and it, things will be better. The text team gets a lot of, you know, feedback about the, being problematic, and uh, I agree, if you want to change it a lot, don't. <laughs> Look for the component teams, is there a textile there? Put it there, that's good. Uh, if you want to change some of them, change some of the big ones. You can of course change the fonts and things like that, but don't change the sizes and don't change their, change their opacities, because a lot of widgets depend on their opacities to make things look nice and right. So, so you can't mock around with it too much. What you can do when you really want to go custom, plug your text team in, plug it into a tech team extension and, 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 and use that. All right, a few words about Teams Playground. In Teams Playground is sort of a companion app for, for Flex Color Scheme, where you can explore material teams and copy the config of any setup you make, use it in a Flutter app together with Flex Color Scheme, and you got an instant team. So how does this work? Yeah, let's see, see. I got my nice little Material 2 classic team here. It's nothing wrong with it, it was very hip once, but you know, it's feeling a little bit aged. You know, the widgets are, you know, how they used to be, and this is the default material to design color team that exists there that people started using a lot, but you were supposed to make your own. But okay, it, it works, but let, let's spiff it up a little bit, you know, we can do better, I think. So, let me go into Flex Color Scheme, uh, and you will find this on, on uh, the Teams Playground and, and docsflexcolorscheme.com and you will find links to all these this wondrous toys. Let's find a team we like. We had the pink somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's use that and I enable it. And uh, I'm going to turn on the some opinionated component teams. And uh, let's do some surface blends. Yeah, let's get some pink into the surfaces. Yeah, we can do that, all right. And uh, that's what it's going to look now. It's look very similar, we saw that before. Let's see it as well. Yeah, okay, let's see it with secondary and tertiary, but let's keep our primary color the way we want it, so we get our brand color in there. Okay, cool. And let's check out the dark skin. What we got going here is uh, I'm changing the strategy. I uh, want the color on the, on the, on the cards, etc. and brand dark on background. And yeah, let's see a little bit more. Okay, I think this is good. We can do that. So, yeah, all good. There's the code for it. Oh, let's use Material 3, of course. I almost forgot. And yeah, this is how the code looks. It's very simple. Copy. Uh, let's get into Android Studio somewhere. Okay. There is the old team. It was just a default with a bit of nothing, nothing, nothing fancy with it. Let's get rid of it. Paste in this code. Hot reload. Come on, come on, hot reload. Yep, yeah, there you go. There you go. And uh, we could, well, let's take a look at it just to verify. No? There's a good verification spot, I think, there with the new chips. They are beautiful. I really love them. They look gorgeous, don't they? 
And then let's find them here of uh, chips. There they are. Well, well, everything looks the same. So that's how you make a quick fix for an OLAP to get a pretty new material 3D design team in it. <laughs>